I just always feel that you can never do really great work with in intentions like that. Like you need to be inspired creatively, um, and from the inside, you can't just be like, I want to do this because I want to make money. That that will never work. Uh. Thanks for tuning in to episode three of 12TV where we chat business, branding, and marketing. Today we have Alyssa Lau with us. Alyssa is a 25-year-old entrepreneur who is making waves in the global fashion industry with her online store, The New Classics. She also dominates Instagram space with over 60K followers and collaborations with in international brands such as Chanel, Coach, Aritzia, and Expedia. Thanks so much for coming by, Alyssa. Thanks for having me, Eric. This yeah. is awesome. Um, so Alyssa, can you tell us a little more about yourself and maybe about your company, The New Classics? For sure. I mean, this is kind of a very long-winded answer, but I first started off as a fashion blogger in 2011 uh, while I was still in university. Um, I graduated in 2013 with my general sciences, all fun, I forgot everything. Um, <laughs> and from there I started working in a biochemistry lab part-time as well as working for Coup Boutique, which used to be a really fantastic women's wear store. Um, so I was working both there part-time. This is very long answer, by the way, so I'm not giving you the short. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> we want to hear it. <laughs> so yeah, through kind of working at those very bipolar, I guess, areas, um, I figured out that I didn't really want to work in the sciences and I wanted to open up my own store. So that's where New Classics came in. Um, and so right now my partner, Eric, another Eric, <laughs> um, we currently work at New Classics full time. Um, I still have my blog running up and we do things occasionally. Um, What's your blog's name? It's Ordinary People. It's not that great, but you know, it was how many years ago? 2011? Six years ago. <laughs> um, and so we still have, yeah, we still have the blog. Uh, we do photography on the side. We do a lot of random things sometimes, but mostly focusing on the store. So all in all, I- Raising two dogs? Yeah, I <laughs> raised dog mom, number one job. Um, but basically all in all, I would call myself a creative. That is the short answer, but mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm um, a lot of other things as well. And New Classics is uh, e-commerce only online or do you have a, a retail store as well? Yeah, so New Classic Studios, it was started as, well, I noticed that Canada didn't have a market for sustainable fashion. So New Classics, we founded New Classics in October 2014 and it's just three years old now. Um, but we, I noticed that there really was no market for sustainable fashion in Canada and no stores that were supporting any local designers or just Canadian designers in general who were interested in joining the slow fashion movement. So we started New Classic Studios with the aim of promoting the slow fashion movement, encouraging customers to join this movement and learn more about how their clothes and their consumer purchases affect the environment and the people who make their very clothes and shoes and whatnot. So we really started New Classics with the aim of raising awareness. Um, secondly, as a platform to benefit designers who are paving the way for slow fashion. And thirdly, just to sell beautiful things because like so many of these designers, they're very small, they don't, they're just starting out, but they're doing amazing things, so. So I would call you a social media influencer. In your words, what is influencer marketing and how do you feel it plays a role in today's advertising landscape? Um, yeah, I mean, influencer marketing, it's a really great way to advertise considering the traditional methods of advertising were very costly. Um, you could be paying like over $10,000 to be putting an advertisement in a newspaper or like even more so, billboards. right? Just, exactly, billboards, TV. But now we have just everyday people who are willing to post on their social media accounts. Um, just we have students, we have teachers, moms, sisters, anybody you could think of, you could post something and you'd be an influencer. So it's become a really great way for brands to just find a way to connect with their customers a little bit more because um, by using everyday people, it's become much more personal, the way that they advertise. But with that being said, I think like at the moment, it's a great way for brands to advertise, but brands really need to do research into who they want to represent their brands because at the end of the day you could be just paying like a hundred people a hundred bucks each to advertise the same thing but if it doesn't match with your branding if it doesn't match with who you are well I guess that's branding <laughs> 
But basically, <laughs> your company people, story. Yes, people need to make sure that they do research into who they want to be the face of their brands. Right. But you feel like it's changed the game in terms of, you know, traditionally people would see TV ad. For now, sure. Now people are on Instagram seeing, do you think it changes their buying habits? And, you know, if Kylie posts something, mm -hmm. all of a sudden we have a million people buying this new product, right? For sure. I mean, I was reading that Chriselle Lim, I was, there, was, there was like a WWD article on her, and she was saying that she posted a pair of pants on her story with no direct link, but it resulted in like $15,000 worth of sales for the wow. company. So That's great ROI for them. With social media influencing, as a brand, you're always trying to make sure that their message and their whole identity meshes with yours. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense and people are like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, 100% has a line. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're a blogger uh, just starting out, there's tons out there, yeah. uh, of course, and you want to be the next Alyssa Lau, uh, where do you feel like someone could get started and where, what would they do to get the most exposure? Right. Like. For sure. I mean, like the great thing about blogging is that anybody can do it. Um, that's, I mean, that's why I started it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but if you wanted to start a blog, like the only thing I could really say to you is just do it because you like it, not because you want to be- Make money it. or- Exactly, because right. when you, I just always feel like you can never do really great work with in intentions like that. Like you need to be inspired creatively um, and from the inside. You can't just be like, I want to do this because I want to make money. That that will never work and your expectations will, you'll never meet your expectations. Mm -hmm. So then that will just suck. Um, but so I what mean- what platform would they get started on? Like what, where do they begin? It's hard because I started on lookbook.new, which is pretty much dead now. Um, but it was uh, somewhere where people shared their outfits. I didn't even have a blog. We just started posting outfits and that was great. And so I know that a lot of people now are getting started on Instagram because it's so easy. All you do is get your friend, a tripod, a boyfriend, somebody take your photo, post it, and then voila, like you're a blogger. <laughs> <laughs> so Instagram is definitely easy. Um, about getting exposure though, it's a little t tougher because they have changed the algorithm for Instagram. So unless you're willing to be in a pod or do giveaway, loop giveaways, which are like kind of sketchy too, um, it is hard to get that growth. And like the, it's really weird to get how to foster organic growth in Instagram. It's really hard to do that unless you're willing to resort to the more unethical ways. <laughs> I mean, you could always buy Instagram followers, but no, don't do it. Yeah, you're not gonna get real engagement there. Yeah, and I mean, it's hard. I think just like the only way to actually get people to like your stuff is to make stuff you love and that you're proud of. Because as long as you keep creating great content, people will recognize that. You touch on pods. I kind of have mixed feeling about pods. <laughs> love. Well, I'd love to hear like what your take is on pods, and maybe tell people out there who don't know what Instagram pods are. Yes. What are Instagram? <laughs> what are Instagram pods? So this is really important, especially from a brand's perspective. Like, there are so many marketing and PR companies that don't know what pods are. And that astounds me because I'm like, this is your job to figure out what that is. So when it comes to pods, there are they are essentially groups of people who they it's almost like they're saying that they're beating the system and they're like, we're gonna beat that Instagram algorithm and increase our engagement at the same time. Um, and so what they do is that when they, so let's say we, you and I are in a pod. So I'm like, Eric, I'm just posting a photo right now. Right. I need you to like and comment on it right away. And then when you do this, when you post a photo, I'll do the same. Right. So it can be groups of like 10 people or hundreds or thousands of people. I don't know if it actually goes to the thousands. But does that work? Well, it does because the way Instagram works is that if the more comments and likes you get, within posting your photo, the more Instagram thinks your photo is actually great and popular. Right. <laughs> so I could be posting a picture of like this cup and if I get a hundred likes within the first 10 seconds, Instagram will think it'll be a really great photo. Maybe, who knows? It's a great cup though. Yeah. Um, so that's how pods work and um, it's like for, it's, for me it's unethical, I think so. Um, but. I mean, I can like get why people do it because they're like, oh, this is our job. We need to beat the system. We need to, but it's not real engagement. And so you are tricking brands into thinking that, oh, this person has actual influence. Yeah. Because when you have like 50 comments on a photo, that looks crazy. But when all those comments are like great posts or like love this, you know, like super generic and not personable at all, then that's when you know somebody's in a pod. And I know that some people have actually written articles about pods already, 
but I'm so surprised like people don't know about this stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, you went from zero to 60K followers uh, and working with some of the biggest brands in the world just in under a few years, right? Or organically. <laughs> uh, what do you feel ignited that, that personal brand? Okay, honestly, this is really funny. So I think when I first met Eric, I had like seven. Wait, who's Eric? My boyfriend. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't meet you then. So when I first met Eric, I had like 7,000 followers. Yeah. Eric, do you remember? What? How many followers <laughs> I had? I don't know, like 3,000. Three? Seven to three. What? No, I had way more. Don't let him do that. I had like 7,000 followers when I first met Eric. And then he started taking my photos. I actually don't know if that's what it was. But it, because before Eric, I would actually have to take a tripod out into my back alley, take my photos and all that. But having Eric be there, be my photographer, be super supportive and help me in not only like he's, he does my, he's my manager now actually. So help me not only in my projects and, and just like coming up with these creative ideas. After that, I was like, I saw a really big gain in followers, I guess. So I having know, a support team helped you get there. It did. And I, and like Eric really helped me. He was really good at helping my like creative ideas and dreams come true because as you know, like not everything can be done. That's a great boyfriend. It is a great boyfriend. It is a great boyfriend. So <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, like, that's the only correlation I can come up with. Otherwise, I really don't know why. <laughs> no, I think that's important. I think people sometimes try to do it on their own. Yeah. Having that support team and uh, good people around you will help mm -hmm. you and them excel. I mean, people can definitely do it on their own. Like, I like Margaret Zhang yeah. for a long time. She took her own photos. Awesome I don't know photos. if she still does, but her photos were amazing. And she probably put so many hours of love and dedication into that, but I am just so lazy, <laughs> <laughs> and I am not at her level. Yeah. So she like you can definitely do it by yourself. Um, it just takes like a whole new level of work, and dedication, yeah. and effort. I agree. Yeah, I can't do all this without my team behind yeah. the camera here. <laughs> uh, so you've done some uh, big online collaborations with. Um, some fashion brands like Nasty Gal, Victoria's Secret. I think you're in a commercial for Lady Speed Stick as yeah. well too. How do you how do you get these? Like I think a lot of people are wondering. Like you know they'd love to do this as well. But yeah. how do you get uh, um, those connections? How do they reach out to you? I mean I know some people who are like they actually will reach out to these brands, which is great because I mean like you gotta hustle right when you're in this job market in every job exactly right? right but i think especially so as an influencer because there are so many influencers out there right you need to be you need to be like i want these projects but a lot of the time when people come to us i like to think it's because of the work that we do um i as a creative professional if you will um something that i'm always trying to do is work outside the box um, i'm always trying to push my limits and see if we can do something else. So don't fall, I guess the answer to that question is, don't fall under the blanket of everybody else. Be unique. Yeah, right? that's what I'm thinking. You don't want to be like everybody else, especially when it comes to such a creative field, because as soon as you're like everybody else, then yeah. nobody's going to notice your things. I think too many people try to see what other people are doing that are successful, but yes, it doesn't exactly. necessarily work for them, right? They got to do their do own you. thing. That's right? my favorite thing. It's like, you do you. It, as an influencer, as a blogger, you can never pretend to be somebody else because you will never be as good as they are at being them. So the best thing to do is just be you. Awesome. <laughs> no, um, how do you feel like growing a personal brand helps your business? I know you have your ordinary, uh, ordinary people uh, blog, you have your personal brand, the Lucilla brand, and then you also have new classics. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like those things help propel the new classics store and should other individuals who have a company or you know just individuals themselves should they be building their personal brand i mean for sure it's it's free yeah <laughs> it's free to have an instagram account a twitter account a facebook account and i think just like using these tools is the most you could possibly do even if you don't know anything about marketing the fact that you can connect with customers is such a accessible like on such an accessible platform is crucial and it's not like you're paying so much money for this. I mean, as new for new classics, I think it's been really great. Um, even if the ROI isn't there, and even if we aren't converting Instagram followers into customers, they know about our brand, and they and that's all we can ask for is that right. exposure. Is that they keep us at the back of their heads if they remember us. Um, that they know that we're a stable site. 
if they need to recommend it to a friend, for example. And just like having us be online in that presence, um, it's really great. So building both equally is important. Equally, yeah. Right. Um, I mean, we are focusing more on new classics anyways, mm -hmm. but I still love what I do with uh, Instagram. Um, just the way it's transformed into purely advertisements can be exhausting. Um, right. There is a lot of pressure like as an influencer to post every day. I have gotten rid of that, thank goodness. But for like in my opinion, Instagram has really changed for the worse. Right. Um, I still think it's so important, like that's why we still yeah. have it for new classics. Um, but like, I just have to remember that Instagram for me is a place to share my creativity. It's how to connect with people around the world as well too. Yeah. 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 So I just have to keep reminding myself of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a topic that I wanted to bring up was a lot of bloggers or companies or whichever, right? Yeah. Uh, brands are, they always ask us like, you know, do we, we feel that uh, niching down to specific aesthetic, theme, look, feel, does that help us grow our account? And do you feel like that's important? Well, I mean, with Instagram, everything is so superficial, right? It's all based on how everything looks. So if I visit a page, and their feed doesn't look nice like instinctively i'm just not going to really like that profile so there is a certain sense of having to follow and maintain an aesthetic for brands um for your personal brand i mean you can post whatever it's who you are right like right. if i want to post a picture of my dog i'm going to post a picture of my dog yeah. but for new classics we do have to maintain a certain quality of images um that means that i'm not posting that many phone images as much more so from the dslr all edited like a certain type of lighting um and that's just to maintain a certain air of professionalism right around it we want our customers to know that like it's our brand we are uh we just want to, it's a reflection of your brand right so you want to make sure that it's very high quality okay sounds good um if you are a brand retail or fast store or company looking yep. to get into this space in terms of find an influencer to help them with their marketing mm -hmm. right we talked about how um it's a great entry point uh yeah. it could be a lower cost entry point yeah, yeah. for brand street uh reach individuals you know in their market yeah how does one go about finding the right the right influencer to to you know i've heard <laughs> i've heard good things i've heard horror stories you know yes. we vet we vet and go through a list of influencers before we choose them for any of our yeah. campaigns mm -hmm. what's your take on how a brand finds the right person um i mean i think i know a lot of brands are they want to go with the cheapest, right? Like whoever has those cheapest rates. And that ne that's not necessarily the best way to go about it because who you choose to represent your brand really matters and who you choose to associate yourself with is a reflection of who you are as a company. So I think it's not even asking the influencer. You need to at first just start doing a lot of research. So whether, so like even if that includes just searching hashtags like Yeg Fashion, for example, if you wanted to find a fashion blogger. Right. Um, and then you need to find out if their engagement is real or not. Um, lots of people have like 100,000 followers, but they'll have maybe 500 likes on a post, which means that their engagement isn't very high. So. Um, big question everyone has. Uh, what is the key to success on Instagram? There is no magic formula. <laughs> I just think you need to keep doing what you love and then hopefully people will notice how much love and energy and effort you put into your posts. That's okay. all I have to say. <laughs> uh, what's the next big wave in social media? I actually thought it was Snapchat and then Instagram copied Snapchat and now all I use is Instagram stories. Right. <laughs> so I don't know, I was actually thinking about this the other day, I don't know if there's anything well, I guess there's like Twitch TV and there's like live streaming, but live streaming scares me. So I actually don't really know. I think that YouTube is stronger than ever. And I think that brands really need to start focusing on YouTube blogs yeah. as well. I tell us everybody um, just because it's so much it's more personal. It's organic and raw and it's not like people aren't, you can't edit yourself on a video like you can edit yourself in a photo, right? right? You can't face tune that. Maybe you could, I don't know. So live, live stream, Instagram live, Facebook live. Facebook Watch. Yeah. Facebook Watch is coming out to compete against YouTube. Really? Yeah. What's Facebook Watch? It's like the YouTube on Facebook. Facebook? Ugh, really? Facebook Watch. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, there's so many things happening. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on. I would say like moving to video, definitely. What's your take on sound? So I know like Alexa skills, yep. uh, Google Home, Apple, HomePod. Oh, I love my Google Home. Right? All those things. So, you know, those, I think that's good. You know, if you can take over that space and when you wake up in the morning your Google Home talks to you and that's yeah. an advertising 
yeah. the weather or whatever. That would be might, interesting. You know, uh, I never thought about that. What's your that, take? What's your take on sound? I mean, I think it's great. I know a lot of people are scared about those things because they're like, oh, it's always listening to me. You know, I mean, your phone's always listening to you when you have Facebook Messenger. Your microphone's always mm -hmm. on. So the moment you're on the internet, you're giving away your privacy, anyways. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I think I love them. Like I love podcasts, yeah. right? Yeah. So I do too. I actually don't saves, listen to them as much. I think that saves you time. I feel yes. to do the next big thing, yeah. right? Yeah. So I mean, I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, piece of advice for all our audience, everybody that's watching. One key thing to how to grow their business or brand. Okay. Um, I think reaching out to people. If you really don't know what to do, you should always reach out to people, even if you don't think they're going to reply, because it's always going to be a no until you do. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, they're a little scared about social media, um, a little wary of the whole space in general, but um, it's free and it's a great tool to use, especially if you're interested in branding. Um, and again, if you really want to people to love what you do, then you have to love what you do. So right. that's all I have to say. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add to that point though, 100. Okay. Like I've reached out to some people across the world yeah. uh, for advice, and yeah. you know, some people have messaged me back, and they're CEOs of large companies, yeah. and they message back with, "Hey, I'd love to help you. Let's get on a 30 minute call." And they exactly. actually schedule a call, and we do the call, and they get soup, like a lot of awesome information. Yeah, you know, like um, just ask if you and have you never questions. Know. Like, you, I would think that person would never mess me back. Yeah, but they do. Exactly. So, you know. so if you don't know where to start, just like DM a bunch of people. So can they be, <laughs> can people DM you? Do you they reply can. to all your DMs? How many okay, DMs? Okay, I reply to most DMs yeah. unless they're like silly questions. I actually got invited to a pod, and I still have that in my DMs. I haven't accepted it because I don't want them to know I like see it. But sometimes I, it's like my in into the pod world. But um, I do accept most DMs unless they're like weird questions or they can find the answers on Google. Like that's my one thing, it's like if Google can answer it better than me, you should probably ask Google. <laughs> but if you want advice, like I'm more than happy to like help you out. Do a lot of young bloggers reach out to you? Yeah, and like I mean I can't go to coffee with a lot of them, but I'll email them. <laughs> right, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think what you give, you get in return, right? Exactly, and I think like, for me, when I started out as a blogger, I had all these questions I wanted to ask people, but I never could because they weren't receptive or like, I don't know, or maybe I was just too scared. So one thing I'm always trying to tell people is like, you should never be scared to ask questions. Um, you should never be scared to reach out because you just never know what will happen. Right. Yeah. Uh, any new, to wrap up, we're any new exciting projects that you're gonna be working on here that we uh, wanna hear about? There are a few, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but like we're, we might be doing a pop-up shop for new classics uh, for the holiday months. Um, and we're like, this is very tentative, but we're looking into potentially long, launching an in-house sustainable line. So okay. that is- Super awesome. exciting. Yeah. Where is this pop-up shop where you can't release that information yet? I don't know yet, it's not confirmed, so I feel like I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, if they're interested, where do they find you? Where, yeah. are you gonna, where are you going to drop this information about um, Shop and where do they find you personally? Just on our Instagram account. Like, so, New Class Shop New Classics, that's our Instagram account. And then my personal is I'm Melissa Lau. Um, we'll throw those links up on the... Yeah, down there. Yeah, I know people always there, do yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's if you want information, that's where it is. <laughs> awesome. Thank well, you so much. Thanks so much for coming by. No, thank chatting. you guys for having me. Get it another year, let's get it another year. Get better, blood and tears get shed it. The sweat ain't coming with the music though. Speak it with my feelings in it. We're nowhere near regretting it. And what I'm smoking right is therapeutic. And she wanna leave, cause she require my mind. I focus on success and that requires my time.